check it out guys. I finally made it to Asia. Wait. That isn't right. This isn't Asia. This is Chinatown. In Perth. I knew that taxi driver was lying. Hey guys. I am exactly three days away from flying up to Indonesia and making my way up through Asia and beyond. And uh, since I've got so much stuff to do within these next three days, like planning, which I haven't done anything of, or, you know, making sure I have any of the gear that I need, I thought I'd procrastinate by climbing this tree and making you guys a video. If you want to come to Australia on the working holiday visa and you're anything like me, you don't know a thing about it. Looking up all the information online, you pretty much find stuff for the work and holiday visa, which is basically the same thing just for anyone else in the world besides Americans. There's two major differences between the two visas. Well, that you'll actually notice. There's more, but all through government stuff. The first difference is when any other country comes to Australia on the working holiday visa, they get a job in the agricultural field, they work 88 days, just like that, they get a second year. With the work and holiday visa, you come here, you get a job in the agricultural field, you still have to leave after the end of your year. Basically, on the work and holiday visa, you can't extend. Americans cannot extend. Sucks, but nothing you can do about it. Let's not get confused. When you get here, you're going to hear heaps of rumors about they're voting to change this. It might change next month or something like that. I've heard it a lot and I've seen a bunch and I've met a bunch of Americans who've heard it. I've, I've called the government. I've emailed many different people. It's not true. They've been deciding to vote for this for years now. It's not going to change. Don't get your hopes up. The second difference is actually a benefit. Each country is allowed a certain number of visas to enter this country. Once that quota is met, you know, anyone else applying can get denied. Luckily, about only 5% of Americans actually backpack. So, applying for this visa is super easy and almost never get denied. On that note, though, when applying for this visa, do not go through an agency or anyone else to get them to apply for you. All you're doing is paying an extra hundred or so dollars so that they can be a middleman. You're not going to cut your work down any bit at all. You still have to get uh, you still have to get the agency all the information that the Australian uh, that the Australian government's going to need and the only thing you have to do, the only thing you don't have to do is fill out the application. The application. If you know your name and you have your passport on you there's nothing to it. Why pay someone an extra hundred dollars to do the application to just write down your name? Application is super easy. There's a few requirements, but you can easily go online to the Australian government website. I'll put a link down below. All you have to do is download the little uh, application, fill it out, email them that with the requirements. And the requirements are quite simple. You'll need two proofs of ID. You'll need I use my passport and my North Carolina driver's license. You can easily go to a library and get them photocopied to your hard drive or print it off there for about 20 cents. Or I went to my bank and they did it for me for free. The second thing you'll need is probably where most people are going to get stumped. You'll need proof of at least 5,000 uh, Australian dollars or the equivalent. Which at the time of me applying was about 4,100 US dollars. If you go to Australia right away, chances are they're not going to ask for uh, they're not going to ask for proof of funds. Even if you go later, I actually arrived in Australia ten months after applying for the uh, visa, and I still didn't have to prove any funds at all. Matter of fact, I didn't even have to talk to anyone. It goes through your passport, so it's all electronic. Just scan it into a box, and you go. The only downside to that is if you like the stamps of countries in your passport, you're not going to get that, so you should probably actually go to the counter. And last but not least, you'll need uh, you'll need to pay the application fee, which if I remember right is steep. I don't remember how much it is, but I want to say it's like $300, $400, something like that. I know that's a big variance, but it's huge. 
Uh, and it's non-refundable, but like I said, as an American, pretty much as any country, you're really not going to have any problem getting in here. I think when I filled out the form and sent them all in through email, they, they told me, what, eight days or something like that, eight business days to get the report back, maybe two weeks or something like that. I got it back in four. Granted, visa number, everything. Perfect to go with. No problem at all. So, don't pay a middleman to just write your name on the form. There's no reason for all that. Easily come here. Now let's keep this video a little bit short and actually be able to post it online through the amazing Wi-Fi that Australia actually has. I'm going to split up what to do when you get to Australia into a second video, part two.